Summary of the City of Ember by Jean Duprau. The head builder and his helper both take a seat. The head builder says that people will have to live in the city for about 200 years, and he has made a box with instructions on how to leave the city. The mayor will keep the box, and it will be opened at the right time. Everything goes as planned until the seventh mayor gets sick and tries to open the box because he thinks it has a fix. He dies before he can tell anyone about the box, so it gets put in the back of a room. It opens up in the end. It is assignment day in the year 241 in the city of Ember, which is dark except for the light bulbs that light it up. Today, students who are finishing will find out where they will be working. Lena, age 12, wants to be a runner so she can run, but when she pulls a slip out of Mayor Cole's bag, it says Pipeworks Laborer. Dune, who used to be Lena's friend, is drawing a mailman and spitting that it's a useless job because there aren't enough supplies and there are blackouts. Dune later offers Lena a deal because he wants to work at Pipeworks so he can see the generator. Lena is so happy that she runs home to tell her grandmother and her little sister, Poppy. Lena only has her grandmother and grandfather left because her parents died two years ago. Lena thinks about a bright city she likes to draw as she cleans up their messy flat above Granny's yarn shop. Ember is the only light in a dark world, according to the book of the city of Ember, but Lena still wishes that her made-up city was real. The next day, Lena goes to work. In the afternoon, a young guy who looks strange asks her to give Mayor Cole a message. It says that Looper has sent a new package. Lena can't wait for the mayor to come to the gathering hall. Lena goes up to the roof when she's bored. The head guard, Reg Stabmark, shoves her off the roof and tells her that being curious is a bad thing. When Lena's message gets to Mayor Cole, he sends her away instead of putting her in the prison room. Dune got to the pipeworks early that morning, ready to do important work. He takes his boots and slicker and follows Arlen Froll, a young woman, down a long stairs. At the bottom, Dune meets the river, which is big and moves quickly. Before taking him to fix a broken pipe, Arlen takes him to both ends of the river and past the generator room. Dune goes back to the engine room and goes in during lunch. Dune thinks that no one really knows how the generator works after watching it for a minute. A man who works on the engine confirms this at the end of the day. Later, when Dune gets angry at home, he throws a shoe heel which hits his father in the head as he walks into the flat. When Dune tells his dad about his day, his dad just tells him to pay attention. Then he asks about Dune's worm, which he has put in a box so he can watch it. In the last few days, it has grown. A few weeks later, Lena finds Grandma taking stuffing out of the couch. She wants to find something, but she doesn't know what it is. Lena figures out that her grandmother left Poppy in the shop and goes to get the scared, crying child. Lena asks her neighbor, Mrs. Meadow, to check on Granny the next morning. Lena delivers a message to Clary, the head gardener, at work. Clary works in the gardens on the edge of Ember. Lena tells Clary that a shop owner wants more potatoes and cabbage, but Clary says she can't fill the order because the potatoes are bad. Clary sends Lena away when they hear crying, but Lena hides and watches as a young man named Sag Merrill stumbles from the dark unknown regions beyond Ember towards the greenhouses. Sag says he was looking for something that could help them, but he can't see anything without a light that can be moved. Lena and Clary both try to comfort Sag. Lena asks Clary if there's really nothing out there after Sag goes. Clary pulls out a bean seed and says that it has life in it, but no one really knows what life is. She puts the seed in a pot so that Lena will grow from it. More of Mrs. Meadow's time is spent at Lena's flat. Lena likes this because Mrs. Meadow is neat and takes care of everything. Lena hears one day that only one store in town sells colored pencils. Lena takes Poppy with her to look, even though she knows she should buy Granny a coat instead. Looper is the store's owner, and he shows Lena the pencils. Lena puts Poppy down and wants the pencils so badly she can hardly stand it. She picks two and pays $10, which is a lot. Poppy is gone when Lena turns around. Lena runs into the street, but
but just as she does, the lights go out. Lena screams out of fear. The lights come back on at last. Lena finds Poppy, who was taken care of by Dune. Later, Lena decides that her pencils aren't so pretty because they make her feel bad about herself. Mayor Cole yells about answers at a town meeting, but people throw rocks and trash at him. Dune is upset by what Mayor Cole says because he doesn't think the mayor has any plans. Granny is digging in a wardrobe when Lena gets home, and Poppy is chewing on paper next to an old metal box. Lena stops in her tracks when she sees that the paper is covered with the builder's perfect writing. She picks up the papers. She knows they are important because they are instructions for something. Lena asks Captain Fleary to look at them the next day. Captain Fleary, on the other hand, thinks it's an old recipe and tells Lena not to worry because, as a believer, she thinks the builders will save them in the end. Lena then asks her friend Lizzie to look at the instructions, but Lizzie is too busy talking about her boring job as a supply depot clerk and her new, older man. Lena thinks that she should tell the mayor, so she writes him a note. Lena tries to figure out what he wrote when he doesn't answer. She figures out that the paper is about the river and the pipeworks after doing some research. She chooses to get help from Dune. Dune wanders around at work when he has free time. In a tunnel that says no entry, he only finds a locked supply room and an opening in the ceiling. There are also what look like writings on some rocks near the river, but he doesn't think he'll ever understand electricity or do anything important. Dune goes to the library one day to look into fire as a way to move light, but in Ember, fire only happens by chance. Lena stops him as he's leaving and asks him to look at a paper she has. Dune agrees that it is important and agrees to sneak Lena into the pipeworks the next day to check out the locked door. Lena is sure that the door in the pipeworks is the door out of Ember. When they hear scratching, thumps, and a muffled voice, they hide. They see a man, which confuses Dune because this person doesn't work in the pipeworks. Lena and Dune are upset that this man got to the door before them and will be the hero for saving Ember. The next day, Granny wakes up feeling sick. Granny stays with Lena for two days. Granny dies on the third morning. Lena and Poppy spend the day with Mrs. Maddow, and Mrs. Maddow tells Lena that she and Poppy should move in with her. The next day, Lena sees Lizzie leaving the closet with a bag in the afternoon. Lizzie seems to be thinking about something else, and she trips and drops her cans. Lena picks up a can of peaches and a can of creamed corn, both of which she hasn't eaten in years. Lizzie runs away. The next day, Lena finds Lizzie before she goes to work and gets her to admit that her boyfriend, Looper, finds things in rooms that are supposed to be empty and gives them to her. Lizzie says it's fine to take these things if Ember is going to die anyway, but Lena says it's not fair or right. She says no to Lizzie's offer to give her more cans. A week later, Dune chooses to go back to the pipeworks and check on the strange door again. It's open, and Mayor Cole is sleeping inside, surrounded by food, clothes, and light bulbs. Dune tells Lena this right away, and they figure out that Looper must be sending things to Mayor Cole. Since the mayor is the one doing the wrong thing, they decide to tell the guards. Lena goes looking for Clary and tells her to come to see the instructions. She tells Clary everything she knows about Mayor Cole and the pipeworks room. Clary sighs and says that evil is everywhere in Ember, even in the people who live there. Greed is what the evil looks like in people. Clary also points out that Lena's seed grew. When Clary looks at the instructions, she thinks that the title should be Instructions for Egress, that is, Instructions for Leaving the City. Lena tells Dune about this, and they plan to talk about it at the singing party in two days. Dune sneaks Lena back into the pipeworks the next day. Based on what they can read in the instructions, they find a door and a ramp leading down to the river. Inside are boxes labeled matches and candles, and when Lena and Dune figure out that candles are lights that can be moved, they are thrilled. Using the candles, they can see that the room is full of hundreds of boats that are meant to float down the river and take them out of ember. Dune packs a bag for the trip and checks his worm the next morning. The worm had wrapped itself up, 
but as Dune stares, a moth comes out of the worm's shell. Dune sees guards looking for him on the street, and he is so angry that he runs to warn Lena. They see signs that say they spread rumors, so they decide to hide in school. They talk about whether they can still make their statement at the singing in a few hours, but there are always guards there. Dune advises that they leave a note for someone and take a boat on their own. Lena doesn't want to leave Poppy, but she agrees to take a note to Clary. But when Lena went outside, guards caught her and took her to the gathering hall to see Mayor Cole. As Lena is being scolded by Mayor Cole, the lights go out. Lena pushes through the darkness to get to the roof, where she hides and joins in the singing. During the last song, the lights go out, but they come back on right away. Lena joins the other people, takes Poppy from Mrs. Mudo, and goes to the pipeworks to meet Dune. She says that she now knows Ember is not at all safe. She and Dune work together to push a boat into the river, get in it, and release it. They shoot down the river until they get to a pool that looks like the end of the river. There, they find a book and realize that Lena forgot to give their note to Mrs. Mado. Since they can't get back to Ember, they walk up a road that Lena finds. There's a welcome sign from the builders. After about an hour, the air smells different, and when they come out, a silver ball is lighting up a strange area. Hair is all over the ground. The three people are tired, so they sit down in silence and notice that the silver ball is moving. They watch with tears in their eyes as the silver ball goes away and a bright one rises in its place to light up the colorful world. Lena and Dune each pick up a book. The woman writes about why she decided to take part in this project, which is meant to help people survive a disaster. She is one of 100 older people and 200 babies who take a bus and then climb down a steep walk to a pool by the river. They will get to where they are going with motorboats. The kids should never know about the woman's life, but the woman thinks that her story is important and that people will need to read it someday. Lena and Dune know they're from this place, but they can't find any signs of a disaster. They look for a way back to Ember all day and find a cave at the end of the day. They find a ledge with a view of Ember far below. The letter is tied to a rock, and the rock is thrown down. When the strange package falls in front of Mrs. Mudo, she picks it up. About the author. Duprow was born in California in 1944. He was born in San Francisco. She went to Scripps College and got her bachelor's degree. Then she went to the University of California, Berkeley, and got her teaching license. During her life, she has worked as a teacher, an editor, and a professional writer. Duprow first became known for her work when she published Adoption, The Facts, Feelings, and Issues of a Double Heritage in 1981. This book looked at how being adopted affects a person's feelings. Over the next few decades, she wrote several other non-fiction books, including the biography The Earth House, but The City of Ember is her best-known book. She lives in Menlo Park, California, and spends a lot of time in her yard there. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.